our message affirmation this morning is, with spirit, I am free, I am unlimited. And this is such a baseline new thought unity principle. And some of you may recall part of that. There's a song that we sing about that, that we are free and we are unlimited. And indeed, we are. And many of you uh, may recall the last time we were together was Easter. As we were celebrating the resurrection of Christ, we talked a bit about the walls that we build in our lives that hold us back, the things that we have learned from the time we were children with, um, you know, parents indicating, no, you can't do that, or teachers saying, no, you can't do that, or other authority figures telling us things that we can't do, and so we feel limited, and we walk through life with these sort of walls around all of the potential that's within us. And so we talked about breaking down those walls and arising spiritually just as Christ arose at Easter time. And so we wanted to revisit this and talk about the other element too, is that when we build these walls, these limiting walls, we're also not allowing things in. Just the way that walls keep things in, walls keep things out. And so spend some time thinking about all of the self-imposed limitations. Even for me to say you self-imposed isn't quite fair because going through life, I know from childhood, I remember, uh, you know, my father saying, no, you can't do that sport, you're too little, or, uh, you know, people telling me things I couldn't do because of this or that. And, And I'm sure that we've all experienced at one point or another in our lives something that we wanted to do in an authority figure Uh, putting us down or saying, no, we weren't good enough for that. But we need to realize that indeed we are. We are because with spirit, we are free and we are unlimited. And so we want to break down these walls that do limit us. And when we do that, we're not only letting out all this potential within us, but we're allowing in all of the love that is around us in the world. And that is such an important thing. And we know that as we talk about the teachings of Christ, the way show, are one of the most important elements that we always want to focus on is the love and the understanding that we are indeed able to do all things because we are created in the image of God. And of course, that harkens back to our scripture reading today from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. We know that the small army was attempting to infiltrate Jericho. And indeed, God had directed them to do this. And he knew that in numbers, that really, theoretically, there was no way that this small army was going to be able to break through the walls of this big city and overcome it. And so he commanded them to very simply march around it seven times and blow their trumpet and the walls of Jericho fell down. And so when you find yourself in a place where you're worried about lack or limitation or you're worrying about your health and you find yourself so disturbed and upset and distraught, visualize yourself walking around that situation seven times and trumpeting and see those walls breaking down and see yourself becoming free and unlimited, free of the challenges that uh, all of us face, free of the challenges of prosperity, free of the challenges of good health, free of the challenges of developing uh, loving relationships and being a loving person and receiving love. See all those walls coming down. And in that process, we can be just like our New Testament reading. We read that, of course, after the resurrection, Christ uh, had come and had met with people and had uh, discussions and talked with everybody. Um, And then near the end, when it came time, it came to pass that Christ blessed those that he was with, and he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. There was no sadness. There was no uh, distraught feelings. There was no uh, wondering whether they were ever going to meet again or whether they were going to ever get to share counsel with Christ again because they knew that they were free and unlimited. And in life, as in our transition, we're always free and unlimited. And of course, when we are in spirit form, we'll understand that so much more and we'll enjoy it so much more. But it's great to know that now and enjoy and experience that now because uh, living a miserable life, worrying about things and uh, living inside of these walls that we may have 
created for ourselves. Kind of I'm envisioning our hearts, our heart, all the love that we have to give, all these walls around our heart, to break them down, break them down and be loving and be uh, this figure of grace and beauty and wonderment that indeed we all are in the eyes of God because that's the way we were created. We were created in the image of God and God is perfect and we are therefore perfect. And we may look at ourselves and we may see flaws in in this way or that way and uh, we need to know that indeed God looks at you as his beautiful, wonderful creation and indeed smiles down and loves you and knows that you are the perfect perfect being that he created. And so we never need to doubt that. And we never need doubt that when we align ourselves with spirit, that we are free and we are unlimited. And we do this through the instruments given to us, and that is through prayer and through meditation. In New Thought, we're big advocates of meditation, and that's a time when we can quiet all the busyness in our mind and align ourselves with spirit and come to that quiet place where indeed we can Uh, slowly break down these walls that are limiting us from things that uh, we don't need anymore. We don't need to worry about lack or limit. We don't need to worry about uh, an unlikely or an unkind diagnosis from a physician, or we don't need to worry about a challenging relationship we're having with a loved one or a family or a friend or a coworker or neighbor. We just need to know that with spirit we are free and unlimited every day in every way. And I was listening to NPR, and they were talking about a film that's out on Netflix now, so if you have the option, it's a great film to see. It's called Come Sunday. Um, And it is about a minister who spent, uh, you know, a good 20 years of his life. He built a huge mega church in Tulsa, and uh, he was very, very intent, and he spent this 20 years running around saving souls, and that was so important to him. And, and he grew up in this very fundamental, very closed-off, walled-in belief system that you had to be saved and that he had uh, this obligation to go around saving people. And one day he had this epiphany. He was watching something on television, seeing uh, about all of the challenges in Rwanda where people were dying, babies were dying uh, from famine, from disease, from things. And he, it, it occurred to him that there could be no way in this world that a loving God would send that soul to hell because they hadn't been saved. And the light switched on for him. And he now runs a New Thought Church. So he had transitioned from this mega church with like, you know, 6,000 people every Sunday. I can't even imagine that. Plus, he was on television, and uh, he was, uh, you know, the golden boy of Oral Roberts because he'd gone through his university, you know, which they're very, very, very fundamental. And so it's wonderful that this epiphany came to this leader of a formerly very fundamental organization. And indeed, he ended up leaving that organization, and he uh, is now just like us in a, in a new thought. He's open-minded, and he knows that, indeed, with spirit, we are free and unlimited, and we don't have to live inside of a box. So uh, the film is called Come Sunday. So if you get a chance to watch it, it's a great thing to see. Uh, you know, during the film, they don't uh, mention near the end about the new thought thing. I just found that out because I Googled him. Uh, obviously, in a film, you know, there's only so much time because you don't want to spend your life watching TV like I do. So... <laughs> <laughs> binge watching things. But anyways, maybe I'll have that maybe in the bookstore or in our library as a loaner. We might even start a loaning program of certain uh, DVDs that we think would be interesting for people to see to help uh, understand it and become more acquainted with all of our new thought traditions and to allow us to live lives where we know that aligned with spirit, we are free and we are unlimited because we are every day in every way. And so our goal this week is to allow spirit to come in and eliminate all self-imposed limitations. Feel the freedom of the unlimited blessings meant for you. And indeed, we know that God has meant for us to live lives that are blessed. And the good news is that when we let down the walls of lack and limit developed through the years, we not only let go of things which no longer serve us, but we allow all the blessings of divine spirit into our hearts, into our minds, and into our lives. 
Because as I mentioned, walls not only hold things in, but they also block things out. And so by eliminating these things that have built up over the years where we've heard about uh, things that, uh, no, you can't do that, or that's not for you, or we, we, we've all heard these things, know that they aren't truths. The truth is that we are perfect children of God, and we are smiled down upon by God, and all good things are meant for us by God, and it all begins up here with our thinking, with our thought process. We put ourselves in that place of positivity, and indeed, we do receive that divine spirit. All right, I'd like to invite you all to join me in prayer. Eternal loving God, we thank you so much for being with us and within us in every circumstance, in every situation. We thank you for allowing us, Lord, the wisdom and the guidance to break down the walls that have limited us in the past. And just as the walls of Jericho fell, we know that indeed the walls of lack and limitation within us can fall so that indeed we can have the lives that you have meant for us, lives of great happiness, great health, great prosperity, great peace, and great love in every circumstance and every situation. We thank you, eternal and loving Father, in the name of faith, in the name of hope, and in the name of love. Amen. Amen.